Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning for our worship. Um, I'm Father Nathan. I'm the rector here, for those of you who don't know me. Um, we are uh, conducting our annual meeting today, so we're going to do some business first and then move on to worship. This place is pretty good about moving through our business in a pretty efficient manner, so we're going to do that and then begin worship as soon as possible. Usually we'd like to feed everybody when we do this, but that's just not possible this year, so hopefully we'll get back to those, those kinds of things soon. Uh, I'm going to speak more during my sermon about kind of where we are as a church and where we might be going, but I'll just open this part of our meeting with a prayer and then turn it over to our, junior, our senior warden first. So let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with those who take counsel in this parish for the renewal and mission of your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Joan Schisler. I'm the senior warden here at Middleham and St. Peter's. Um, the first order of business for our annual meeting is to elect our new vestry members. Um, there are three openings and three nominees. Tom Briggs is running for his second term, Ann Hayes is running for her first term, and Janet Werner is running for her first term. Uh, we will vote for the slate by acclamation. Are you ready? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Great. Uh, congratulations to the new members and to all the members who are already serving on the vestry and the officers. Yay! <laughs> and now I'll turn it over to Jim Yo, who is our junior warden. Good morning. I was going to ask if anybody knew me, and if you didn't know me, I was just going to say, great, then you won't call me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, I get to talk about the budget this morning. I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, some projects that are coming up. Uh, for the church, uh, and then I'm going to change hats from my church hat to my community life center uh, president hat uh, and talk a little bit about that. So last year uh, when we built our budget, uh, we have been very good at staying on track uh, throughout the year, uh, even with the pandemic, and at the end of the year we came in within 3.9% of our budget, which is really good for a budget the size that we operate. Uh, our pledge results for this year were $264,000. Uh, we're going to carry over on that 3.9%, $11,000 from uh, 2021 into 22. Uh, our projected expenses right now, because we're starting to come back into buildings and we're using them more, uh, is about 294,000, which gives us a difference of about 19,000 uh, that we are a, as a deficit. So you think, well, that's a pretty big deficit to carry. But if we go back and look at if we come in again around 3 to 4% of budget, uh, we should be right about where we need to be. Uh, one of the things that we pride ourselves in that we've done now for, I guess, the last four years uh, is that we do not use endowment money uh, in our budget, in our operating budget. We just use the money that we collect from you uh, uh, on a weekly basis and from what we get from the plate uh, on a daily basis or every Sunday and then the, for those holidays. Yes. Yes. They're down, uh, and they're down mostly because of the changes in our population. Uh, we've, we've, we've lost quite a few members in the last 12 months. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to look at it. Yeah. Well, it could be, I guess, but we tried not to do that because we understood where the people came, why the, why it wasn't there. But it's a good good comment, Nancy, and we'll look at that. Uh, projects being evaluated for 2022. 
there's a number of things that we need to, to look at. One is uh, the driveway repairs going around the Middleham Chapel. Uh, because it's a historic landmark and because it's registered with the county, we can't pave that road. Uh, but what we can do is go back and regrind up the asphalt that was put down in 1992 time frame, uh, smooth it out, put some more on top of it so it's permeable uh, and it's more in keeping with, the, with its surroundings. We also uh, need to improve the lighting over at Middleham. Uh, the street lights that we are, the lights that we have at the end of the walkway aren't bright enough to really see at night, uh, and we need some more lights over there for the evening. Uh, we'll put those in. Uh, we have one more window in the parish hall here to repair. You know, we had the big project where we did all the windows, but we didn't do the one in the balcony. And when you go out today, if you turn around and look at that window, you'll see where uh, it needs some repair work done, so we're going to work on that. Uh, and lastly, uh, we've had a request to evaluate putting a sidewalk from where we come down to the columbarium all the way over to Middleham Chapel so you don't have to walk across the grass and walk across the graveyard and step in holes. So those are things we'll be looking at in 2022. But they come out of the funds, uh, and when you donate to... Uh, buildings and grounds, that's a fund which is separate from the operating budget, and there is money in there to take care of some of those projects. Now I'm going to change hats. Uh, any questions on projects before I go any further? All right. Uh, I'm going to change hats and go to the Community Life Center. A as a lot of you know, but probably not everybody, uh, five years ago, uh, Dale and I started a charity. Now uh, it's an independent 5013C uh, that we operate uh, with the sole intention of providing funds for things that are needed in the county and in the community. Uh, one of those things that we looked at was our backpack program. Okay, at the time our backpack program was serving about 50 people, now it's down to about 30, but we suspect that by the time this year is over and a lot of the government programs run out, we'll be back up into the 50s or 60s. Uh, in that time period, over the last five years, we have contributed to uh, Middleham and St. Peter's and Lusby charge a total of about $25,000 towards the backpack programs. Uh, we raise money independently. Uh, we don't ask the parish for any money, but we do raise that money and we do fund that program. And so I think that's been a huge success for us. Uh, if Elizabeth was here today, she will be next week. She's been on travel this week, Elizabeth Brodus, who runs that program. Uh, we have another check for her today uh, for an additional $4,000 for that program uh, and monies set aside for the fall semester of another $4,000. So we will fund that program for the entire year of 2022. Uh, we also do a lot of projects for the underserved. Dale's on the homeless board, has been on the homeless board now uh, for five years, three years. She put three fingers up upstairs. She's running the camera upstairs. Uh, and we do go out and look for the homeless folks uh, in the shelters and in the tents and give them supplies that they need uh, and fund those programs as well. And we also did a child comfort program uh, which we started this year, Anne was a big part of that, and some of our other board members, uh, where we built or made uh, packages for the police so that when they go to a domestic situation, they can give children in that domestic environment uh, something that will brighten their evening while the police are trying to do their work to figure out what's going on domestically with their parents or whomever it is that uh, they're having issues with. Uh, and that's been greatly successful uh, in the sheriff's department. Uh, has asked us to provide more uh, again, so we will continue to do that and, and make that program work. Uh, and we're also part of the, uh, we're active members of the Calvert County Chamber of Commerce, uh, and there's a couple other things I think that Dale's associated with on boards, but uh, I didn't have them down here, and she can yell over the balcony, but we're not going to do that. Yes, Nancy. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we, we did. We have interfaced with them. Uh, there's a number of other programs in the county that we interface with on a routine basis. 
uh, and we do work with them and we're on their board and we help direct their activities and these same kind of things with the mental health programs. Uh, there's diabetes programs, there's mental health programs, there's uh, uh, a number of other avenues. Yeah, we, we, we are in very much engaged with Correct, correct, and we are much involved in those programs as, as an independent charity. Okay, uh, that's it for that. Any question, other questions about the, the program or the, uh, the charity? Just keep in mind we're here. Uh, if you know of a need in the community, uh, just let us know what it is. Uh, we have a board that meets uh, quarterly and uh, you know, we go over projects that, that uh, will help the community and it also improves our outreach and supports our outreach programs. So if our outreach programs need more funding, then we can help and support that. With that, I'm going to turn it to Hugh Davies, who's going to give you an update. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, John. Oh, it's... It's a team effort between Dale and I. If, if I didn't have Dale to help me, it would never work. <laughs> and, and she's upstairs, so, <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Hugh. Thank you, good morning. Uh, 18 years ago, we founded Plan Giving and the Endowment Board and the 1684 Society here at Middleham and St. Peter's. It doesn't seem, for those of you that were here and were part of it, doesn't seem like 18 years. We continue of, to be a very active, but sometimes not particularly visible part of the, of the parish. We have a committee, and our committee includes myself, Jim Shepard, Carolyn Steiner as members, and then ex officio members are senior warden uh, Joan, uh, Junior Warden Jim, and Father Nathan. I want to acknowledge that with the passing of Sarah Beth Smith, I want us to remember and acknowledge the contribution of Don Smith and Sarah Beth Smith to the plan giving program here and uh, to the 1684 Society. They were instrumental and significant supporters of uh, plan giving uh, when it started and have continued to be uh, plan giving through their lives. This past year, our committee participated in, we are, we are members of a national organization called the Consortium of Endowed Episcopal Parishes. Each year they hold a wonderful national conference and this last year we sent six people to that conference. Um, and we had an opportunity to learn from other uh, parishes across the country and to hear um, Archb the Archbishop of Canterbury and our presiding bishop, um, Michael Curry, uh, at that conference. Pretty cool, but we didn't have to leave here because it was by Zoom. <laughs> you know, a lot of people uh, grouse a bit about Zoom, but Zoom has created wonderful opportunities for us. This past year, we also welcomed Mary Heffelbauer to the 1684 Society through her generous gift in memory of Don. And each, each year, uh, we are able to draw from our endowment uh, a, a particular amount. And this year, we supported ministries. Um, the ECHO program was supported through the, uh, through the endowment. And over the years, many other ministries have been supported by the, uh, by the endowment. We also support capital expense needs. And this last year, we helped to support the upgrading of the HVAC system here and the expanded and upgraded parking lot. So those are, those are endowment things. Since the founding 18 years ago, the endowment has tripled in size to nearly $600,000 thanks to the generosity of the parish and to the good investment in the good market. Uh, and we've supported parish ministries to the amount of nearly $200,000 over that period of time. I encourage you to apply for endowment grants for ministry, and I encourage you to apply 
for personal growth grants that are a part of our program as well. Um, Jim, did I stay within my time limit? <laughs> okay, I didn't see your hand waving back there. Do you have, does anybody have any questions about planned giving at Middleham and St. Peter's? And I thank many of you, all of you really, for being a part of it and making that be a viable program. We have, basically we uh, draw down about right now about $25,000 a year to be invested in ministries and in capital expense here. Any questions? Okay. I think Carolyn is next up. Thank you. I got my instructions. I have to stand on the sun. Um, this is about outreach. Um, and uh, we do a tremendous amount of outreach. And I want to thank everyone for everything that they do to support our touching the world and our community. Um, to serve the world, we, we um, support the Haiti School Nurse Program. And it's now supplying school nurses to five schools and supports 2,000 children and their families. And they author he offer health care and education to students, teachers, and their parents. Um, we also do Touch the World through our Seafarers Christmas Bag programs. And I hope you all read the nice thank you note that we got from the Seafarer Coordinator um, about how we have touched the sailors of the world. Um, and we also reach out into our community in many, many ways. Um, our one big program is the Big Conversation. Um, last year they did a three-part offering on Zoom about trust um, with Stephen Rids Ridsdale, and they're now working on a program for the spring, creating a history coalition. And if you want more information about that, you can talk to Diane. Um, we do the heartfelt backpacks that Hugh already talked about. It, it is supported through um, that grant. Uh, we do meals for Echo House, which we supply once a month. And I need more volunteers for this year. So if you want to make a meal for Echo House, you can find a month that's open. And that would be appreciated. Um, we just did the Safe Nights program, which we do in coordination with St. Paul's Methodist Church and Our Lady Star of the Sea, um, they, um, the clients use um, St. Paul's facility because they have a better facility than we do for having overnight guests. And we helped with preparing meals and overnight proctors and cleaning the facility every day. Uh, we do safe nights. Oh, sorry, I just talked about safe nights. Um, we support the garden. And we need lots more people to support the garden, and that supplies fresh um, vegetables and things for um, Smile. Uh, we did the Christmas Tree of Angels, and that is the program where we give gifts to local um, children whose families cannot provide an, a good Christmas for them. We uh, have lots of programs about health and nursing kinds of things that Dale headed up for a long time. Um, and you note that in, the, in our m monthly newsletters, there's always something about nursing, and they head up that program. And we support SMILE in uh, many ways. Um, so we are very active in the world and in our community, and I want to thank you all for your ongoing support in those endeavors. Yes, Nancy. It was about trust in the health care system, if people didn't hear Nancy. All right, thank you. Who's next? Oh, yes, sorry, another question. Oh, I forgot about the food drop. I'm sorry. And we really do need more help in the garden. <laughs> Uh, 
I think that's it actually for our annual meeting. Um, if you have any questions about anything you heard today, Nancy, which one? That's what Father Nathan's going to cover in his sermon. Um, if you have any questions about anything that we covered or almost covered today, um, please don't hesitate to find Jim or myself or uh, Hugh or Carolyn or uh, anybody else who spoke today, um, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Carolyn. School nursing program information is in the back from Haiti. Thank you very much.